Speakers, all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Adams. Present. Amprey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Present. Borelli. Happy to be here. Thank you. Brannon. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Here. Carnegie. Deutsch. Diaz. Drum. Here. Espinal. Eugene. Gibson. Jonai. Grudenchik. Holden. Here. Kalos. King. Present. Who? Present. Kozlowitz. Present. Lanceman. Lander. Here. Levin. Levine. Here. Mizell. Here. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Present. Moya. Present. Perkins. Present. Powers. Reynoso. Richards. Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Here. Rose. Present. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Torres. I'm here. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Valone. Eugene. Van Bramer. Here. Williams. Here. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. Here. All quiet in the chambers. All rise for the invocation. The invocation will be delivered by Reverend C.C. Alfred Salomon Luna, the priest for pastoral care and community at Trinity Church at 75 Broadway in the borough of Manhattan. Thank you, Speaker. Corey Johnson, Public Advocate Leticia James, and Council Members for this opportunity to offer the invocation for this meeting. I'm honored and humbled. I'm conducting this invocation as a clergy and a staff member of Trinity Church Wall Street. My name is C.C. Alfred Salomon Lua. Let us pray. Holy and undivided Trinity, one God. I thank you for your presence among us and in our hearts here at this moment. Please look upon us. In the city of New York, we are women and men with different sexual orientations. We are citizens, immigrants documented and to be documented. We are believers of different faith traditions and non-believers. We are from different horizons. We are people of color and white. We are of diverse opinions. But you have brought us together to live and work with you. All of us in this room have homes to return to, where we can stay warm 
and relax after this meeting. But many of your children in New York lack that chance. We are at work in this room, but many of, your, of our brothers and sisters are jobless and lack food and drink, and they count on the decisions this council is about to make. You love and each of us equally. I ask your blessing upon your trusted servant leaders, the council members of New York City, as they gather to do the work you have given them to do. May the meeting be governed by your pastoral spiritual of righteousness, inclusiveness, compassion, social justice, stewardship. Assist them in their humanness with your supreme wisdom to mend their differences and be open to others' ideas and beliefs so they can find common ground and reach agreement on what is best for our community and beyond. You will protect them, Almighty God, when they return home. I pray in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> a motion. Pastor. A motion to spread the invocation in full upon the record. Council Member Chin. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate, and thank you, uh, Reverend Lua. Born in Guinea, West Africa, Reverend C.C. Alfred Solomon Lua is a staff at the Trinity Church on Wall Street in Lower Manhattan. Reverend Lua studied philosophy and theology throughout Africa and France before he became a Jesuit in 1989, ordained deacon in 1998, and then a priest in 1999. He was received in the Episcopal Church in Detroit on July 6, 2006. Since September 2017, he has been preparing couples for weddings, youth for baptism, and presiding over these services on behalf of Trinity Church. Reverend Lua has also made it his mission to visit uh, parishioners and community members who are homebound, hospitalized, and in nursing home throughout New York City. Thank you, Reverend Lua, for all that you do for our community. Madam Public Advocate, I would like to make a motion that the invocation be spread in full upon the record. Thank you. So moved. Adoption of minutes also, Council Member Chin. A uh, motion that the minutes of the stated meeting of January 11, 2018 be adopted as printed. Thank you. Thank you. Messages and papers from the mayor. M16, Board of Standards and Appeals appointment. Rules, privileges, and elections. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. Housing. M oh, go ahead. Sorry, Mr. Speaker. M17, New York City Housing and Vacancy Survey. Housing and Buildings. Preconsidered M818, Transfer of City Funds. Finance. Petitions and Communications. None. Land use call-ups. None. Quiet in the chambers. As we now hear from the, as we now hear from the speaker, Corey Johnson. Uh, good afternoon. Yesterday, shortly after we ended the stated meeting, news broke out of yet another school shooting, this time at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. Another senseless tragedy has occurred due to gun violence. This is now the 18th school shooting in 2018. 18th. It is heartbreaking to see that this is now the new normal. As always, of course, our thoughts and prayers are with the students, faculty, staff of Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, the victims and their families, but thoughts and prayers are not enough. Now we again call for the President of the United States and the Congress to do something and ensure that these tragedies are prevented. We also have sad news close to home. Felix Palacios, a former staff member of the Council's Community Engagement Division, passed away. Felix was born and raised in Brooklyn. His calling to public service came when working for the Redistricting Commission in the early 1990s. 
and later joining the staff of Council Members Andrew Rodriguez and Sarah Gonzalez, serving the communities of Council District 38, Council Member Chaka's district, the neighborhoods of Red Hook, Sunset Park, Greenwood Heights, and portions of Windsor Terrace, Diker Heights, and Borough Park. For over 20 years, he was committed to serving these neighborhoods and committed his services to the needs of this diverse constituency over that period of time. His wonderful smiling grin and knowledgeable input in social and political discourse will be sorely missed. Let us please take a moment of silence so folks could stand in honor of Felix and in honor of all the victims yesterday, those we lost and those who will forever be traumatized by the events of yesterday. Thank you. Uh, now I'd like to wish my colleagues and all the, uh, all of our Asian American New Yorkers a very happy Lunar New Year as Council Members Ku and Chin talked about yesterday, the year of the dog. And I want to thank Council Members Margaret Chin and Peter Gu for providing us with an amazing lunch. They even saved me a pork bun because I was late. Yes. So I am happy. Also, I'd like to just extend my well wishes to my Jewish colleagues and all Jewish New Yorkers on this uh, happy Purim. Jumping into our docket for today, also uh, one thing, I, it's not in the remarks, but I want to uh, acknowledge, I'm really glad that the legislature and the governor are moving the uh, primary this year because it coincides with uh, September 11th and also with Rosh Hashanah, uh, and I think it's important that we do that, and I'm glad that's being done from the 11th to the 13th. Jumping into our docket for today, we begin today by voting on a resolution calling on Congress and President Trump to sign H.R. 4937, which provide Ravi Ragbir an opportunity to pursue immigration relief so that he is not separated from his family while his case goes through the court system. Ravi personifies the need for compassionate, fair, and just immigration policies. And we, the New York City Council, will continue to do everything in our power to stand up for immigrant communities in our city and across the nation. We stand with Ravi and urge our federal officials to stand with him as well. Uh, moving on, we will vote on two finance items and a few land use items. Beginning with finance items, we'll vote on two Article 11 property tax resolutions. The first resolution would approve an exemption for a property located at 2524-26 Adam Clayton Powell Boulevard in Councilmember Bill Perkins's district. This exemption would not would support the preservation of 18 units of low-income rental housing. The second resolution for the property located at 147-18 Archer Avenue in Councilmember Danique Miller's district, it would approve a technical amendment to an exemption previously granted by the council in November of 2015 which supported the new construction of 449 units of affordable rental housing. Next, we're voting on the following land use items. The first item is a landmark designation of Peter P. and Rosa M. Huberty House, located at 1019 Bushwick Avenue in Councilmember Antonio Reynosa's district. The house was designed in 1900 and contributed to the, to the development of Bushwick Avenue as one of Brooklyn's most prestigious residential streets. We'll also be voting for the approval of an Article 11 property tax exemption for a project known as Hopkinson Park Place in Council Member Alika Amprey Samuels District. This project would facilitate development of three four-story buildings containing 25 affordable home ownership units. That completes the highlights of today's docket. I look forward to proceeding with today's vote, and I uh, hope everyone has a great President's Day weekend and a holiday weekend, and I look forward to seeing hopefully many members up in Albany this weekend for BLAC Caucus Weekend. I turn it back to you, Madam Public Advocate. Thank you. Discussion of general orders, seeing none. Report of special committees? None. Reports of standing committees? Report of the Committee on Finance, pre-considered Reso 189, <coughs> organization funding. Coupled on general orders. LUs 23 and Reso 191 and LU 24 and Reso 192, tax exemptions. 
Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered M18 in Reso 193, transfer of city funds. Coupled on general orders. On the general order calendar, LU7 in Reso 194, landmark designation. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered LU25 in Reso 195, tax exemption. Coupled on general orders. Resolution appointing various persons, commissioner of deeds. Coupled on general orders, and I would ask for roll call vote on all of the items on today's general order calendar. Adams. Aye on all. Ampre Samuel. Um, with permission to explain my vote? Yes. I just want to quickly say that I've watched this particular property for many, many years, and I'm just excited that we will now be able to have new affordable home ownership opportunities in the district, and at 25 units, I'm very excited, and I'm pleased, and so I, invite, I um, vote aye on all. Congratulations. <laughs> Ayala. Aye on all. Barron. Aye on all. Borelli. I and all except land use seven and Reso 194. Brannon. I on all. Cabrera. I. Chin. I on all. Cohen. Constantinidis. I on all. Carnegie. Deutsch. Diaz. I on all except. LU7, Resolution 194, and Resolution 182. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Eugene. I vote aye. Gibson. Aye on all. Jonai. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. There's no question that the Peter Paul Huberty House is a structure of historic value, but it's also the family's home, and we must respect the rights of private citizens and their property. And as a home that has been well maintained by the same family for over 90 years, I see no reason for the city to place an undue burden on this family and override their wishes. Homeowners should and can be trusted to make informed decisions about their own property, which for many is the single largest investment. So I vote yes on all except for Land Use 7 and Resolution 194. Thank you. Gordenchik. Holden. Um, I on all except. Uh, voting no on LU7 and Resolution 194 and Resolution 182. Thank you. King. Aye on all. Ku. Aye on all. Kozlowitz. Aye on all. Lanceman. Lander. Aye. Levin. Levine. Aye on all. Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. Aye on all. Miller. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you, Madam Public Deputy. I, I will be voting today in support of Reso 182, calling for the Congress to provide relief <clears throat> for Ravi Ragbe. Not solely for, Ra for Ravi, but for all the immigrant families who have been viciously torn apart uh, because of uh, the latest uh, policies of this administration. Critics of, this, of the advocates that have rallied uh, on Ravi's behalf over the past few weeks have argued that his deportation warrants his, 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 um, is warranted because of his prior convictions. But this council has demonstrated in recent past that it believes in redemption for those who have transgressed and that Ravi has paid his debt to society and his mandated criminal justice system. All of us of good conscience know that this government's effort to separate Ravi from his family are motivated by xenophobic policies coming out of Washington, D.C. The New York City Council which prides itself on being the most progressive legislative body in these United States, cannot validate these actions of this administration that has routinely and openly denigrated all immigrants, 
documented and undocumented and harbors particular resentment towards immigrants of color. Thus, I will be voting aye. Thank you. Moya. Aye and all. Perkins. Powers. Aye and all. Richards. Aye and all. Rivera. Aye and all. Rodriguez. Permission to display my vote? Yes. Uh, I'm very proud that we are voting the resolution calling in to allow Robbie to stay in our city. We cannot divide families. I believe that even though someone has made any a, a error in their life, something that in the case of Ravi has not been decided yet because his case is still pending in New Jersey, it should bring us to believe and think that every human being deserves a second chance in their life. Many of us are example that we have a second chance in many aspects in our life. And I think that someone such as Ravi, that have been fighting not only for himself, but also for Amanda Morales, for the millions of undocumented that contribute with billions of dollars to our economy. But no one asked him for the immigration status when they go to Home Depot, to Target, to Marshall. However, we don't want to allow them to stay in our country. The last immigration reform happened on the Republican Ronald Reagan. It is time for us to maintain our family united, to fight for Ravi, to fight for all immigrants, and to fight for immigration reform. And with that, I go out. Thank you. Rose. I and all. Rosenthal. I and all. Salamanca. I and all. Torres. I and all. Traeger. I. Ulrich. Valone. Van Bramer. I and all. Williams. May I excuse me my vote? Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to vote aye on all. I did want to speak on Reso 182. Um, it's uh, often morbidly amusing to hear people speak about why they would not support this resolution or support uh, not deporting uh, under undocumented immigrants using crime, using law, using um, the rule of law and order as an excuse. Morality very often uh, is not equal to law. So uh, the shoe that we spoke about just today uh, was purchased legally. And um, we're not talking often enough and changing those laws. You can go back in time, whether it's the Japanese, whether it's the Chinese, whether it's slaves. We can go back to Germany, go back to the Congo, where people use nuggets of truth as an excuse. And many times they used rule of law and order to cover up what was big tree. In this case, if you use the logic that people are using to its largest exclusion, uh, conclusion, you are basically saying that for the crime that was committed, the fullest extent of the law should be used. So let's say, for exa ex example, if Ravi was not undocumented and the law was you can get 10 years, you are saying there should be 10 years. There should be no other discussion about what the punishment should be. We are immediately saying that the fullest extent of the law is morally correct and should be applied here. That makes absolutely no sense. The reason we are saying it is because we are allowing the orange madness and the other madness that has occurred to permeate throughout this country. There is no reason to be targeting immigrants in 7-Eleven and other places, targeting activists like Ravi to be deported when they pose no public safety threat uh, while we, talk, we are almost silent when it comes to gun violence. Let's not ex make excuses here. This is bigotry, and we can replace ourselves in any part in history and use the same excuses. And people are going to look back now and wonder why people didn't learn from history. Um, I'd like to vote aye and all. I also want to point out the um, changes that's happening in the, in the budget mod, and I want to thank um, the speaker, um, uh, Carlos Menchaca. Uh, we passed 1447 here. It was historic. It came with con uh, dealing with the construction site safety. 
Uh, the administration promised there will be funding for local groups uh, to do that work that is happening today. Um, he doesn't like to uh, get acknowledged, but I do want to acknowledge Ramon Martinez and Latanya McKinney uh, for helping the first step uh, in getting this money to the local groups on the ground who need to be trained. Is that about I and all? Thank you. Ulrich. I ask for permission to vote on all land use items as well as the general order calendar. Yes. I'm voting uh, no on land use number seven with accompanying Reso 194 and I on all others. Thank you. Thank you. Jaeger. May I have an excuse to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you. Uh, I am voting aye on all. I'm voting no on land use seven and Reso 194, resolution 182. Uh, as I explained earlier this morning uh, at the immigration committee led by my brother Carlos Machaca, uh, who did a fantastic job at our inaugural committee, um, I am the child of an immigrant. My father came here on a boat with his parents and his older brother. Um, my grandfather uh, escaped uh, Nazi Europe, Nazi occupied Europe, to China, where he and his classmates from yeshiva lived for several years before they were welcomed into this country. From both sides of my family, I was welcomed into this country, my family, um, an incredible opportunity, uh, an incredible nation did this for us and did this for all of us because uh, most likely very few of us have ancestors who came here on the Mayflower. Um, I vote no because, uh, as Errol Lewis uh, uh, mentioned yesterday, two days ago in his op-ed, the, the person who we're doing this resolution for is not the right example of what's wrong with immigration in Washington. The, the, the problem with immigration in Washington is that it's not recognizing our dreamers. It's not recognizing those who have come here who have abided by the law, who have done right by their community and done right by America, and it's not recognizing that we should put our arms around them and welcome them in. I have utmost respect for my colleagues, uh, my brothers and sisters here in this council who support Mr. Ragburn, who support his cause. I vote no because I do not believe that we should be lending our name to his effort. With respect to uh, LU7, Reso 194, I associate, I wish to associate my comments, myself with the comments of Council Member Joni. Uh, I don't believe that the council should be uh, enabling the big foot of government on the neck of a private individual who owns his or her house, who's immaculately maintained that home for generations uh, by the record of this body, uh, I believe since 1930s. Um, they've done well, they've done right, and uh, they should be entitled to do so in continuum without the foot of our government on their necks, and with that I vote no. Thank you. Matteo. No one LU7 and accompanying Reso 194, I and the rest. <clears throat> Combo. I vote aye on all. <clears throat> Speaker Johnson. I vote aye. All items on today's general order calendar were adopted by a vote of 43 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions, with the exception of land use 7 and accompanying resolution 194, which was adopted by a vote of 37 in the affirmative, six negative, and zero abstentions. And now to resolution 182, which reads as follows. A resolution calling upon the United States Congress to pass and the President to sign H.R. 4937, which would provide immigration relief for New York resident Ravi Doth, Ravi Lawrence Rockbeer, and denouncing the unlawful targeting of immigrant rights activists for deportation by the United States Immigration and Customs Enforcement. The first person to speak on this resolution is Councilmember Menchaca. Thank you, Public Advocate. Uh, and mm -hmm. Council Members, colleagues, Today we will be voting on Resolution 182, which calls upon the Congress to pass legislation introduced by U.S. Representative Nidia Velasquez, which would permit Ravi Ragbir to pursue immigration relief so that he may be, uh, so he may stay in the country lawfully. I will say that one of the core messages here is about due process, and what we're allowing for him to do is to go and continue to show up and check in as he's always done as a lawful uh, a resident of this country and give him that opportunity for due process. This vote reminds us that whether you are an immigrant, 
or you were born in this country, you have the right to due process. We all have that right to defend our cases in court without arbitrary intrusions from external sources, including the White House, uh, which is doing what it's doing, causing fear and panic in our neighborhoods. The times in which we live require us to remain open to all viewpoints and ensure we have open spaces where people can voice their opinions and their concerns. And that's the most basic principle of civic engagement. I thank the members of my committee that spoke out against this resolution. I hear you. Let's continue to talk. Thank you. Quiet in the chambers, please. Council Member, Council Member Williams. <clears throat> thank you. Um, you know, I said most of what I had to say, but I, didn't want, I don't want to leave lingering out there um, the thought that we are going to separate people who need assistance. We will not separate the dreamers from other undocumented immigrants and other people who are in this country. Everyone needs assistance. All of them should be treated as human beings and with respect. What we are saying now, the only people who can make mistakes are those who have documents and American citizens. Ravi had a green card. He was here legally, and he made a mistake. Uh, my parents came here from another country. At any point in time, any of us can make a mistake. Most of us have. We didn't get caught. Uh, so what we are saying is that you are unworthy of redemption uh, if you make a mistake. You are unworthy of any sympathy if you make a mistake. And again, why is it that black and brown immigrants should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law, basically, for this crime? When Ravi served two years in jail, he served two years at a detention center and two years house arrest. Uh, what else do you want him to do to pay for the crime that he committed? We were told by the Orange Madness that they were focused on uh, violent crimes. That's another conversation. But this wasn't that. We should be careful of the precedents that we set and learn from history from those that were set before. I'm very proud to stand with Ravi, and I'm very proud that this body is going to vote for this resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Chin. Today, I stand with my colleagues in support of Ravi Ravi's continued and permanent presence in the United States. Some have claimed that his past precludes him from our support. Mr. Ravi's identity is not defined by his past. He's a husband, he's a father, and he has been an immigrant right activist. He educates our communities and provides sanctuary for the most vulnerable immigrants among us. His past does not define him. His work, educating diverse communities and providing sanctuary for the most vulnerable immigrants after his incarceration has more than earned our respect and support. As an immigrant and as an advocate, I stand with Ravir Ravir. Thank you. Council Member Lander. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Over the last couple of years, I've had the great good fortune to get to know Ravi Ragbir and see his extraordinary advocacy for making our city a more loving and welcome and compassionate place. Um, I just want to underline what Councilmember Williams said. Let's remember, President Trump took the dreamers hostage precisely to try to draw lines uh, that would harm other immigrants. That was his goal, and that's the debate that is playing out right now. But if you believe in compassion and in looking at every individual individually and providing a path for redemption, the resolution today is one to support. Um, and I would just add this, you know, uh, Dr. King, Ravi's work, if you're not familiar with it, leading New Sanctuary NYC and opening up our communities and our churches and our synagogues and our mosques and even one Hindu temple to be places of sanctuary is quite extraordinary. Dr. King said that lo uh, justice is what love looks like in public. Sanctuary is what love looks like in our places of worship. Thank you. Council Member Drum. Thank you very much, Madam, Spe uh, Madam, <laughs> Madam Public Advocate. Uh, I, too, also am supporting this resolution. I have known Ravi Rajbir for the last eight years. I have written letters of uh, support for Ravi for all of the check-ins that he's done over the last eight years. I have worked with Ravi on immigration issues when I was the chair of the Immigration Committee. I have spoken at forums with him. Uh, Ravi Rajbir is truly deserving of uh, the full rights and privileges, and Ravi Rajbir is an asset to the United States of America and to the city of New York. I vote in favor of this resolution. All of those in favor of this resolution, please say aye. aye. All of those opposed? Aye. All of those abstentions?
If you oppose this resolution, please approach the desk and have your vote uh, recorded accordingly. Um, and now to general discussions, beginning with Council Member Ku. Thank you, Madam Public. Council Member Ku, you're, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. I join my colleagues in mourning those, uh, in mourning those uh, lost at yesterday's shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Portland, Florida. A member of my staff actually attended this school 23 years ago. He spent the day yesterday, like too many others, fanatically reaching out to all high school friends and other alumni uh, desperately hoping for news that would not confirm his worst fears. This horrifying event happened in a wealthy, closely, close elite community, in a community that was named, that was named Florida's, uh, let me see, I lost my, that was named Florida's safest city last year. And it just goes to show that gun violence can happen anywhere. And because gun violence can happen anywhere, we must have stronger restrictions on who can buy those weapons of mass murder, heavy machine guns, AR-15s. These are not weapons of sport. These are military weapons designed to kill large numbers of people quickly and efficiently. So enough is enough, it's time to it's time for meaningful gun control and mental health education, monitoring. My heart goes out to all affected by this violence. Let this be our last lesson learned the hard way. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Cabrera. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Public Advocate. Today, I join those who are praying for those in uh, Parkland High School. Uh, this personally hit me home yesterday when I received a call that uh, the mother of my son-in-law who moved from the Bronx, New York, uh, is actually the assistant principal in that school. Mm. I had an opportunity to speak with her uh, yesterday. Uh, she, as you can imagine, she was uh, uh, a bit shaken, uh, traumatized by what took place. Uh, I just don't understand how we could, in America, still allow an 18-year-old to legally purchase an AR-15. I've been in the middle of shootouts. Uh, this stays with you for the rest of your life. When people begin to shoot, uh, you don't know where to run. You see kids running all over the place. Uh, it, it stays with you. I can only imagine what these families are going through. We must have a uh, concert of voices coming together uh, that at the very least, this law that permits 18-year-olds to buy an a AR-15. Look, I lived down south for three years. I understand the culture uh, down south where people are raised with guns, children, and so forth. But uh, this, is, this is unthinkable, baffling to me that we still, in year 2018, allowing 18-year-olds uh, to buy guns and resulting now in 18 incidents. Uh, and we had 17 deaths and 14 that are still in the hospital. My prayers uh, continue, but let's put some feet to our faith because faith without works is dead. Thank you. Councilmember Menchaca. Thank you. Uh, so we just voted on the resolution, transparency resolution number eight, which includes uh, several organizations that will provide construction site safety training. Councilmember Williams mentioned it in his speech. Uh, I want to underscore the sensitive needs of all construction workers that also include limited English proficiency. Over the last few years, New York City has experienced a surge in construction-related accidents, injuries, and fatalities, affecting mostly Latino and immigrant workers. 
Responding to the alarming statistics, this council has made it its priority to guarantee the safety of all construction workers. Last year, we approved a comprehensive legislation package, again, uh, championed by Councilmember Williams and this council, 1447. This legislation sponsored um, uh, also by myself and 45 colleagues included an amendment to the administrative code of the city of New York and the New York City building code to include provisions guaranteeing equal access to construction site safety trainings, addressing the needs of the individuals who do not have equal access to such training. And so today, now we are getting closer to that promise that all safety can go to all construction workers. Uh, and so I'm really excited to continue to do this work. I will say that this is gonna be part of our conversations in the budget, but I'm really excited that both the legislative pursuit of this, uh, of this goal is now being seen in our budget. Thank you so much to our speaker who continues to champion uh, this issue uh, and I know is dedicated to ensuring that we all keep this in the front of our minds. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Williams. Thank you. Uh, I want to associate myself with my, my colleague's remarks uh, on this as well and again thank the administration uh, for following through on what was said. I know this is just the beginning. Um, and I did want to thank uh, Councilman Menchaca and the speaker, Councilman Rodriguez, Rodriguez, Richards, Combo, and Espinal for the resolution that we voted on. Again, uh, um, uh, with Ravi, his wife is a citizen and his daughter is a citizen. And just want to just reiterate, because I don't think people understand, they're basically saying, I expect the people who don't support it, every single person who is on trial needs to receive the highest possible punishment that can ever happen uh, for every law, everywhere, anywhere. That is the only way your um, opposition makes any kind of logical sense. Um, I know it may sound like it does, but we've heard it all before uh, in different times for different people. It is a frustrating thing to hear it again as if we're hearing it for the first time and have learned no lessons. Um, also, obviously, what happened in Florida, I don't even know the words to describe the frustration to hear this happen over and over and over again. Um, the orange man in the White House, the Republicans and those who continue to support him, the leadership of the NRA uh, continue to say prayers of uh, condolences. Uh, and I just want to make sure it is clear uh, they apparently read from the Bible, many of them, and it's a different book that I read from, uh, as uh, was said by my colleague. The one I read from says, faith without works is dead, which means their prayers are hollow and meaningless. I don't have the authority, but I don't think God even uh, respects the prayers that they are making. And I would like to say, if you are not going to do anything, uh, guns are created to kill and maim. That's it, period. Machine guns are created to do that expediently. That's it. If you're not going to do anything, at least shut the hell up. Thank you. Councilmember Gibson. How do I follow that? Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Um, good afternoon to all of my colleagues. Um, I, too, want to join with all of you in expressing my sincerest condolences and prayers to all of the innocent victims in the horrific uh, shooting that struck Florida. Um, certainly no stranger to mass shootings that continue to happen in this country, but it's outright shameful that this federal administration refuses to enact comprehensive and sensible gun reform legislation. So while the thoughts and prayers are great, certainly we all continue to call for action and making sure that we prevent these mass shootings as much as possible. Um, I want to wish all of my colleagues and their constituents a very happy Lunar New Year. And I also want to call to my colleagues' attention in our agenda for today is the upcoming hearing schedule for our preliminary budget process that starts in March. And as the new chair of the new subcommittee on capital budget, I'm very honored uh, that we will have our hearing on Tuesday, March 6th, jointly with the finance committee with Chair Drum. And then if you look through the schedule for those committee chairs I have already spoken to, um, we will have separate hearings with those five particular committees, the Committee on Transportation, Environmental Protection, Parks, Public Housing, and Department of Corrections. So I look forward to having those very critical conversations as it relates to the capital budget. Um, I also want to express my thoughts and prayers to the family and friends of Bronx resident, the late Deborah Dana. 
Uh, unfortunately, the verdict was rendered by the judge this afternoon in Bronx County, and the sergeant involved in her murder was acquitted of all charges. And certainly, it continues to underscore the need to work with medical professionals and crisis intervention teams and co-response teams to make sure that we support first responders as they respond to New Yorkers in emotional distress. So I want to continue to pray for Deborah Dana's family. Certainly this is not a day um, that you know they are ever going to forget, but we want to continue to keep them in our thoughts and prayers. And I also want to remind everyone on behalf of our BLAC co-chairs, um, we will see you this evening for the celebration of Black History Month here in the council chambers at 5.30. Thank you. Council Member Deutsch. Thank you. Um, so um, back in December, I had a, uh, a terrible tragedy in my district where a uh, house caught on fire that left a mother and three young children uh, dead and a father and three young children crit uh, critical in the hospital. And, and also over the last few months um, in uh, Washington Heights, there was a fire that left 17 people uh, injured. And as well as within the last uh, few months in the Bronx, in my colleague, Councilmember Richie Torres' district, uh, it left 13 people dead, including a one-year-old child. Mm -hmm. So uh, at the request of the Bronx Borough President, uh, today, uh, along with my colleague, Councilmember Richie Torres, we have three bills, intro 609, which will uh, mandate Department of Education to implement a comprehensive plan for educating both children and parents about fire safety prevention. And we're also looking to include all the non-public schools, public schools as well. Uh, intro 610 uh, is also a uh, uh, intro today that we are um, introducing. And the fire that happened in the Bronx was a child who turned on the knob of a stove, and that caused the fire. So intro 610 will require uh, buildings owners to put on a safety knob, uh, safety covers on all uh, stove knobs. And uh, the third intro is intro six, uh, which one is that? In intro 603. Is that it? No. All right, the third intro is to, it's basically uh, to educate uh, residents in the building to shut the door. The fire that happened in the Bronx started in a room where that door uh, should have been shut. If that door was shut, it would have contained the fire and the smoke within that room. Uh, since that door was not closed, the fire spread pretty quick throughout the building that killed 13 people. So this would be uh, required building owners to put up the signage in the building to let residents know that if there is a fire in a room, to shut that door. So I, it's, I'm honored to um, have these three bills uh, proposed with my colleague, Councilman Richie Torres, and at the request of the Bronx Bar President, Ruben Diaz, and looking for the passage of this bill, I'm asking all the members to please sign on to this critical, uh, to these cr three critical fire safety bills. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Lander. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. With the 18th school shooting of just the young 2018, I, I find it hard not to get numb. Uh, so one thing I want to do is just like call people's attention to Aaron Feist, the football coach and school security guard who threw himself in front of the shooter to save students in that school. Let's make sure we remember and pay attention to the victims and, and humanize them. Let's also remember even on those days which are less and less rare, frequent that there isn't a school shooting, 96 Americans are killed with guns every single day. And this is a political issue. The president's first act in office was to remove common sense gun laws, preventing people with mental illness from getting guns. So I would just urge you, if you're not already, to sign up for either Moms Demand Action or Every Town for Gun Safety. We're just going to have to keep organizing if we don't want to be in this place day after day after day. Um, on a lighter note, but still an important one, I'm proud to be joining the speaker and Councilmember Richards in two bills that are being introduced today. 
uh, calling on and compelling our city to move forward on issues of fair housing. Um, 50 years ago this year, in the same month that Dr. King was killed, uh, he finally won passage of the Fair Housing Act. President Obama took real steps to strengthen that act, and unfortunately, Ben Carson and HUD and the President rolled that back just a couple weeks ago. Intros 601 and 607 being introduced by the Speaker and by Council Member Richards um, would help make sure the city keeps moving forward on this critical issue, even as the federal government tries to roll us backwards. Thank you. Council Member Barron. Uh, thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I just wanted to add my voice to those who have uh, expressed their condolences and offered their prayers to the victims of this horrible shooting, and their families, and we just pray that they will be comforted as they go through this difficult time. And I also want to say that uh, I've been asked to remind people that at 5.30 this afternoon, we're going to have a fantastic program and pay tribute to some of the heroes that exist amongst us in our communities in terms of what their contributions have been. And I do also want to say that, as my colleague has noted, the bench trial that was held for the killing of Deborah Dana uh, resulted in the judge finding that sergeant not guilty. And I say that as long as officers who kill people get away and are not convicted, there is always going to be that element and that undertone of not trusting the officers that are charged with protecting us because they're not protecting us. They're violating the rules, they're violating their training, there's contradictory evidence that's presented that says that they did such, but yet and still they are not convicted. They get away with murder. And it's an issue that repeats itself over and over and over. And we've got to make sure that we continue to fight and that we continue to raise the issue of a justice system that does not bring justice to victims of police violence. And there was one other thing. Um, I think I said you're invited to be with us this afternoon. We hope that you'll all come. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Yeager. Thank you, Madam President. Um, Madam Public Advocate, sorry. Uh, I, I wish to add my voice as well to my colleagues who spoke about what happened in Florida. Um, uh, Councilmember Rodriguez and uh, Councilmember Perkins and my brother from Brooklyn, uh, Councilman Williams, were outside this building earlier today uh, speaking about it. And uh, I will echo a little bit of what I said earlier. Uh, I, too, am a parent, and I can't possibly imagine the feeling of your child leaving to school in the morning and not knowing whether or not he's going to come home, uh, but for the grace of God, our children were not in that building uh, because we're here in a city that has sensible gun laws. Um, there is no reason that I can possibly fathom that I understand why a private citizen, not in law enforcement and not in the military, should have the ability to pick up an assault weapon in this country legally it, it, is, it is simply an unfathomable concept for me. Uh, whether you are a strong Second Amendment proponent or whether you think nobody should ever have a gun anytime, it, there can't be a place where in America we think it's okay that people are able to buy an assault weapon. But that's the America we have, and that's because of the Congress, and that's because of the President. And there's very little we can do here in this council other than be sad, offer our prayers, you know, hug, hug your child tonight, uh, hug each other here. But what we do know is that this problem is from Washington. And it is a cancer on a, our country created by people in Washington who just don't care. And whatever reason we attribute it to them, uh, uh, whether it's because it's political contributions or it's because they come from a place in America where it's okay to carry a gun. But it makes no sense. And we have to continue doing what we're doing, and people here have been doing it for far longer than I have. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Councilmember Diaz. Thank you, Madam President. What happened in Florida affects all of us. I hear people here saying, talking about prayer and saying, shut up. You know, the nation we could pass 
all the laws that we, that we could pass, and that is good. And they should be laws. But ladies and gentlemen, let me assure you that it is not the gun, the one that kills. It is the evil in people's hearts. And we should pass laws. And laws should be there to prevent whatever. But ladies and gentlemen, don't ever remember, don't ever forget that the evil in people's heart, there is no law. There is no precedent. There is no human being that could take that evil out. That evil is the only way that that evil comes out is with the power of prayer. I know you don't believe in the power of prayer. I know you don't, sometimes you don't believe. And, my, and you might be laughing at what I say. But ladies and gentlemen, that I'm pressing all of you, believe me, the only thing that could help the power of prayer we are taking Jesus, we are taking the, 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 the Bible out. We, we don't believe in any of that. And then we come here, oh, let's pass law. Let's go ahead, pass all the laws you want. And I assure you, that the only thing that could help to take the evils out of people's heart is the power of prayer. You don't, you don't have to agree with me, but even though you don't agree with me, I do believe in the prayer, the power of prayer. Thank you very much, Madam. Council Member King. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Um, happy Purim to my Jewish brothers and for those who celebrate the Lunar New Year. Enjoy. I rise today to just offer my condolences to the families in Florida um, who are going through a terrible ordeal but as well as we are here in the Bronx again when Sister Nana's murder was set free again. I remind us again that in November 2016, we passed a resolution calling on Congress to amend the United States Constitution, which clearly stated that the black at that time was considered three-fifths of a human being. We've also designated March 5th, three-fifth clause awareness day, which is coming up on us in a couple of weeks. Not only do I urge us to be in the room at the Nash ba National Black Theater that evening, but be in there to hear the conversation that's going to take place, which was there are reasons today that a Deborah Danis gets killed and a murderer goes off. There's a reason that's the injustice and fairness, unfairness that happens in this country. And sometimes while we pass legislation in this body, sometimes we forget the root of all evil, which our, our good council member, Reverend Diaz, just mentioned, because prayer means so much to us all. And when we're outside of these halls and walls, and even when we start the day, we offer up with prayers and words of inspiration. And then we forget that moment when we've got to go through trials and tribulations. So I say to us all, I remind us all, our history has been such as that injustice and bigotry lands in this country and moves this country each and every day. 45 is an example of it. But what are we going to do in the city of New York? When do we stand up and fight and stand together to fight the causes of injustice and bigotry? So to the Dana family, to all those in, in, in Florida, I offer my condolences and support. And my daddy and my mama raised me to be a gentleman and a happy person in the spirit of the Lord has put happiness in my heart. If I've offended anybody by being happy in this place, I will pray for you because God's in charge. With that being said, blessings and prayers to each and every one of us. God bless. And lastly, Councilmember Rodriguez. I pray every day hoping that our president open his heart and stop the message of hate that is spread throughout the whole nation, a hate that has a role in the attack that took the life away of those beautiful life in Florida. 18 shooting is too much. And I believe, with the Reverend, as the Reverend said, that as a person of faith, we have to keep praying. But at the same time, we also had to be part of redefining our American built by and for immigrants. The American that this president and the right wing of this nation is trying to take us backward. I think that the shooting that happened yesterday is also reminded to our city, let's be prepared. It's a matter of time. When the black market that is selling those weapons to other nations are also coming to a city, 
we have so many young people dealing with mental health issues with our no social workers, guiding counselors, and psychology in our school. I don't want to advocate to turn our school as, as a state police in our city, but also I think it is time for a city to put together a plan on improving safety. I'm not advocating for a small, detect, a, 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 a small detector in our, a, in our schools, but I'm pretty sure that every single private school, they send a letter or email or test today to the parents because today there's 1.1 million students discussing what happened in Florida. I'm not too sure that our parents in New York City Public School got a letter encouraging the parents to be part of this conversation and offering support on how to guide in this conversation. Is an amended tally uh, with regards to land use seven and accompanying resolution 194. It was adopted by a vote of 36 in the affirmative and seven in the negative. And now to close the speaker, Corey Johnson. I want to thank everyone for uh, being here, of course, two days in a row for stated meetings. Uh, again, I wish everyone a nice holiday weekend. I hope to see many of you in Albany at BLAC weekend. And I want to just flag for folks that our preliminary budget hearings on the mayor's preliminary budget uh, begin in the beginning of March. That schedule is attached to today's agenda and can also be found on the council's website. This meeting is now adjourned.